as they say, cyber security is the new nuclear. Mm. So you don't have to drop a nuclear bomb. So for example, if I want to attack some enemy country, I just need to change certain parameters in a dam so that when a water comes, automatically the sensor will detect that the water level or the pressure is less, the gates will not open and suddenly the dam will go bust. A lot of people will die. The initial uh, people or the suspicion will fall on the contractor that the cement was not good and things like that. And after two years investigation, you might find that there has been a cyber security attack. But by that time, the whole thing is diluted. So same thing with the railways. Even if there is a war now, if I... Uh, so every, hello everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of the Gorabatra show that's going to be live again today. The topic which I have chosen for the next one is uh, about the OT security. Okay, because why I, I think uh, when we talk about the emerging technologies today, we always uh, say, you know, uh, with the IT, it's not a support function anymore. It has become business enabler. And I call or categorize each and every organization in a two ways. Either it's a, uh, it is because of IT, okay, like, you know, organization like Netflix, uh, Google, CyberFrat, Udemy, uh, Uber, Ola, right? Or another organizations which are growing because of the IT, right? Maybe the banking sector, but the if I talk about the machinery, right, that is also now getting enabled with the IT. In the manufacturing sector, aviation, defense, we have seen the pharma as well, like we have seen the OTs, the technology is taking care everywhere. So to talk basically on OT security and see the challenges around here, I have someone who has around 25 years of experience in manufacturing, engineering, and also, uh, you know, in the OT security side of it. So I would like to uh, call, uh, you know, Mr. Uh, Sen Gupta on the stage. He's a CTO and co-founder of Bizhack Technologies. Sir, please welcome to the GB show. So, uh, Sanjay ji, aapka, you have an amazing experience, I think 25 plus years uh, in the manufacturing, engineering and overall IT side networking and I've just gone through your profile and that sounds so amazing and I'm really, uh, you know, feeling pleasure to have you on board on, on the GB show, right? So, uh, as you are currently uh, doing a lot of work in the OT security space and if I talk about, you know, challenges which uh, organization are facing in ICS security, if you can enlighten, uh, enlighten us with those, uh, some of, you know, words on that side that what are the major challenges organization face in the ICS security? So first, uh, I will outline that uh, why we are talking about OT security as such, because if you see OTs are also machines which has our automated things, IT is nothing with, again, information technology machines. The major problem that I see is that as time is passing, earlier OT and all those automation things, we are part of uh, manufacturing and other things where their physical security was there. So there used to be a person sitting outside, there were air gap networks, or there were people where you can put a lock. Now, as human beings have found a magic thing, that is they can automate stuff. Yeah. So whenever you want to automate stuff, the main thing is the challenge of automating. Security is always at the last thing that comes in the mind. Yeah. But now as the world is becoming more insecure, so in that case, what happens is your uh, people who are now connected with IT, they also are facing the challenges. Because earlier what used to happen is OT, air gap networks, they, you don't need much security, you have two security people sitting outside. Mm. But now there is, is a convergence of IT, OT networks. So now people want that if you have 10 companies, you want to manage from one place. So in other words, then now it is open. If you are able to go in, then other hackers can also go in. So that is one issue. So now OT networks are opening up. So that is one issue. Earlier, it used to be closed. Yeah, closed issue yeah. was still there, but it was under the hood. Second problem is that OT networks and OT devices, if you see PLCs and things, they have been designed to do specific work. Hmm. So what happens is these OT or the manufacturing or these factories, once you set up, you have to spend a lot of money in order to do that. So CAPEX is huge. So suppose you set up a factory and you spend 50,000 crore. 
after that let's say after 5 years i say that well there is some insecurity in it you have to change the plc it becomes very difficult but in it uh, even mobile phones every 2 years you are changing it so you are getting the new updated patches and stuff like yeah. that but in ot that yeah, is a yeah, challenge yeah. I, i was talking to one of the pharma organization and they are using the old age operating system the legacy system because if in the belt you know to get it upgraded then they need to have so many uh, dependencies but you think that uh, uh, the ot security is actually a emerging challenge in the overall cyber security field actually definitely it's a emerging challenge because if you see now uh, as they says cyber security is the new nuclear Mm. so you don't have to drop a nuclear bomb so for example if i want to attack some enemy country i just need to change certain parameters in a dam so that when a water comes automatically the sensor will detect that the water level or the pressure is less the gates will not open and suddenly the dam will go bust a lot of people will die the initial uh, people or the suspicion will fall on the contractor that the the cement was not good and things like that and after 2 years investigation you might find that there has been a cyber security attack but by that time the whole thing is diluted so same thing with the railways even if there is a war now if i uh, basically bring down the power station your railways will stop working your satellites will be uh, blinded so even you can't uh, launch a nuclear strike also so ot has become very important nowadays okay and when we talk about cyber security i think many uh, cios and cisos are here and if i talk about like say uh, cyber security why it is different for it okay and when i talk about ot how i need to handle it differently and why it can't be merged and someone who is expert in i uh, you know it security uh, why can't he be an ot ex- security expert or if they need to go there what all uh, gaps they need to fill yeah. so so if you see from the it perspective so initially when we talk about it security the thing that will come to your mind is antiviruses about 20 years back we used to have not an antiviruses and these and that so if you see where we, we used to put the antiviruses inside the computers we were able to put the antiviruses inside the computers because you had a reasonable cpu you had reasonable memories so you can put those things you can monitor and stuff like that. Yeah. now in ot you have plcs which has hardly kbs of memory you can't put agents in it plus these plcs are manufactured by siemens rockwell and others so they are different there is no common architecture as such so in that case how do you monitor that now also now after antivirus the thing that came was sim so you used to get logs and then correlate find out what are the attacks and things like that here you can't get the logs because there is hardly any place where you can put that so very small things nowadays some of the manufacturers are putting the uh, security or trying to put some security there but the problem is you have a factory that you set up in 1980s in 90s you already had spent 100000 dollars you are not going to throw everything and again change stuff so that's a really serious challenge okay uh, fair enough and if i talk about because you said architecture right so there is no common but is there something generic template uh do you know get the architecture around the ot security yeah. yeah definitely there is a generic template actually uh we have some product on the ot sector we are following that generic template so let okay. me give you an analogy yeah, sure so for example you have got a locality of so many houses now you are the head of rwa you basically want to secure that locality now one way is that you just have a couple of security expert they go to each house designed by different architects just look at, at what are the security thing that has to be done some houses you will find that the doors are not sturdy some houses have got uh, windows which has got a problem some house has got others mm-hmm. so that is one way you keep on going there and trying to secure it now there another problem is that house owner may not want to make changes whatever the expert suggests so there is that challenge so what you do is basically you say that well i will follow a different approach so first approach what you can do is you build a wall around that whole colony Okay. so now that wall basically is a generic approach you are not changing anything in the house now the second thing what you can do is you will put uh, a person or people who is monitoring who is going inside so that is another approach so you are monitoring that third approach is you basically are keeping a list and you basically talk with the police and others and saying that just let me know the bad character so that if anyone from that gang comes i will stop that entry and the fourth approach you can do is you put some dummy houses inside that whole locality so what happens is if even if there is a lateral movement as we say mm-hmm. so the dummy houses will not have anything but still you will be able to catch those okay. and the fifth one that you can do is you can monitor 
that whole environment to see if any new houses have come up or not. Okay. So that also you can check. So instead of going to each house and securing it, you can follow this approach. Okay, sounds interesting. Maybe I will get more details in uh, depth from uh, you. But uh, here, like, you know, the, to the follow-up question, because when we are talking about this whole template, it's like uh, me putting up the security layers by layer yeah, and by even the including deception. In security, you know, we always yeah. talk security in layers. So layers, and you have put some deception uh, technologies over as well. But for the OEMs, you know, who are making these products, right, do they need to consider something Definitely. from the security Definitely. side? Definitely. Yeah. They need to now, since the memories and other things are becoming cheaper, and you can put a lot of things in the chip, so they can also have some log mechanism. Mm. They can also put some agents. In fact, we have created sensors with very small footprints. And we are talking with Honeywell, Siemens and others to put those things inside it. So that at least you know what is happening. And another thing that is very interesting and emerging is that uh, basically what uh, these PLCs do is they do some programming based on the input they are getting from the sensors. Now, if you poison the sensors input, so suddenly the input is different. So okay. there the AI can play a big part where they can keep on uh, learning what about the input of the sensors. And if there is an anomaly, they can also trigger an alert. Sure. Thank you, uh, Sanjay. It was uh, great talking to you. And maybe uh, for my audience, I will uh, uh, you know, request you to tell them more about uh, VISAC and OT security, what all you do, maybe if you can brief them and uh, how they can connect you later uh, to the audience directly. Basically, VISAC is a company. Uh, we are India's first vertical oriented company. So what we mean by vertically oriented cybersecurity company is that uh, if you see, uh, even if we don't talk about cybersecurity, if we talk about security in general, there are three pillars in that. So first pillar is the humans, second pillar is the machines, and the third pillar is basically the maintenance of machines. So to elaborate it, so a human might be very brave, but the machine or the thing equipment he has is outdated so even if you are brave you will not be able to fight a war on me and the opposite is also true you have a very fantastic machine but you don't know and your knowledge is inadequate so that also you will not be able to do much and the final thing is you have a nice machine you know it well also but during crucial time it is not working because the maintenance was bad so we basically do all three we are a large scale training provider we are training uh, nic's digital cyber security team Plus, we are training the power engineers in India using through NPTI. And we also have a portfolio of products. And we have a service team where we do ransomware simulation and phishing simulation and a whole stack of things. So, and we believe that we should not see OT in an isolated environment because now the convergence of IT and OT is happening. So, we have got a uh, software where you seamlessly, you can see threats, in OT environment, you can see threats in IT environment. We also have a, I call it software cybersecurity insurance where we have the deception technology on top of all these things that we have because no company in the world, even after 500 years, I will say, can say that we can detect 100% of threats. So in order to do that, we have that uh, deception layer also. Plus OT, IT, remediation, everything, because now with AI and all those things, it should be automatic. At 3 o'clock, if there is an alert coming and it is serious, we should not have people uh, awake at that time. And anyway, we can't depend on human beings when so many alerts and so many attacks are happening. So it has to be automated, intelligent. The sensor should be such that it should be everywhere so that they can detect the threat. And they should be intelligent. They should be something like that. Even if they are compromised, they should be able to recreate themselves. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks. Sanjay. It's uh, really great having you on the show. And uh, thank you. And I have a small gift for you as well. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you everyone, I'll see you in the next episode very soon, thank you.